Okay, let's meet the fighters. At the age of 19, he weighs 70 kilograms, height 1.82 meters. He has two records, of which one is a win and the second is a loss. Representing team Thai Boxing, coming from Moldova, Sergio Morozan. And the bullpen. And now, at the age of 23 years, weight 70 kilograms, height 1.7 meters, only one record, and this is a win. Representing MMA Academy, coming from Moldova in the red corner, Gheorghe Pavla! This is a lightweight bout, 70.3 kilograms. Three rounds of five minutes each. Extra one round, MMA rules. Referee in the ring, Alexandro Bedkoglo. There's the horn. 70.3 kilos is the weight limit here. Whoa, big right hand there. And Morozan. Down to the canvas early, pops right back up though. Another good shot going in there. Look at these shots going in from Pavlov. You can't take too many of those with those little gloves on. This is not a kickboxing rules matchup, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to pick him up here, does get him off of one foot and gets the takedown he was looking for here and now ends up in side control. Or does he? Loses that. Almost passes the leg completely now. Caught in the guard here of Sergio Morozan. Ooh, and looking to unload some more of those powerful right hands. Ooh, a right hand in return there off of his back, a couple of them chiseling shots there, landing cleanly in the face of Pavlov. Well, he sits back, looking for that Achilles lock. Still got a hold of the leg, he's eating right hands though. Whoa, beautiful! Look at this now! Moroza completely reversed the position now, and Pavlov rolls out of it. This action is all over the place. How quickly the tables can turn, ladies and gentlemen, and now we're back where we started. Pavlov gave up the top position to Morozan, and now very quickly has regained it. Hard right hand sinks in, and another one. Two of those landing to the temple of Morozan. Right hand nearly misses. He's trying to transition into the arm bar. Couldn't quite pull it off, though. Back and forth shots. I like how Morozan is able to hit off of his back. Oh, my! He's trying to turn it. Couldn't quite get that Achilles lock for the second time now. And again, Pavlov able to reverse the position. Just when you think you've got the answer, your opponent changes the question. I'm trying to get around the corner there, couldn't quite do it. 
Oh, and another chiseling. Two of them. Beautiful right hands there off the back from Moroza. Rose unlocking him up now with his legs. It's going to make it harder to posture up. You can't. Ooh, left hand to the body though. Uh oh. Look at his right leg almost sneaking over the back. More right hands going in. I like how Morozan doesn't give him any kind of a chance to get comfortable there when he's in the top position. As Soon as he sees an opening, he's constantly throwing his hands off his back. And there's a sneaky shot. All the way around the back of the head with the right hand to the other side of the face. More right hands, look at that. It's, it makes it so much harder to advance your position when you're on top, when somebody's constantly hitting you like that. Pavlov looking for a way in. But look at the long legs of Morozan, constantly keeping him at bay, and now the referee gonna step in and stand him up. Catches the leg here. Not much time remaining in this opening round. And there's the horn. So both guys will get a minute here to talk it over with their corners, but man, that was a very fast-paced round, a very back-and-forth round. It seems like nobody was, was able to really get a significant advantage on their opponent without the other one returning the favor. So if you had to go back and look at absolutely everything, the strikes, the takedowns, the sweeps, the submission attempts and take everything into account. How would you score at watching at home for round number one? And we'll find out how much they've got left here for round two because that's got to really take a lot out of you. So much went down. Take a look at the uh, just under the right eye of uh, Georgi Pavlov looks to have a little bit of not it's not cut but there is some kind of a small injury under the right eye it does seem to be bothering him a little bit maybe he's squinting a little there tried to throw him but he lost it these guys could be a little wet or slippery after the break between rounds they're pouring water all over these guys they're sweating profusely Nice right hand over the top. And now Morozan locking up that left arm to prevent that from happening again. But this is more of a defensive position. He loses a lot of submission opportunities or striking opportunities by doing that, but he does limit what Pavlov can do with that right hand. Trying to get past that left leg of Morozan is Georgi Pavlov, but just can't pull it off. I think that the game plan of Pavlov is to get into, ultimately, is to get into side control. It, it seems like he, or at least half guard. That, that seemed to be his plan right from the beginning. I think it was in the opening minute or so of round one. He took his opponent down and then tried to establish side control, but it didn't work. And it seems like from here on out, that's what he's really been working for, is to either do damage from guard with punches like that, to eventually move into to half guard or side control, but he just can't get past the legs of Morozan. 
Makes it even harder when he's got that body lock on him like that. Whoa! Both guys staying busy with strikes. Wild right hand right there may have smashed the canvas or the side of his opponent's face. And I think that it, this could be a case of, uh, well, if, well, if he decided, had the body lock, he just relinquished it. But besides that, that these two may be running a little bit low on fuel here and simply just, well, now he did. He finally was looking for that opportunity and he took it. Maybe he was playing possum there. I don't know, but it, just as quickly as it came, he lost it. Easy come, easy go, I guess. He was looking for any opportunity to pass that leg. He did momentarily. And then Morozan was able to recover the position. <laughs> Referee calling for action here. <laughs> Crushing right hand. There's absolutely nowhere for your head to go. Ooh, and he smashed him with an elbow that time, or a forearm. Look out. He's trying to tighten up that triangle here. He's really cranking on the neck. This crowd can feel that something's coming here. He's trying to put the squeeze on him. Oh, he may have it here. Look at the back of his neck, it really looks like it's in a vice. No, and he loses it. And maybe finally now, no, recovers the guard here. I think that Pavlov's got to do a much better job if, that, if he really does want side control of establishing it once he gets close. If that's not the game plan, then what is? Just to sit and guard round after round and throw punches? Ten second hammer has dropped. A bit of blood coming, I believe, from the bridge of the nose of Sergio Morozan, and that is it for round two. Well, a bit of a lackluster round there, but I think both guys exhausted after what we saw transpire in round number one. Nevertheless, uh, Georgi Pavlov, when it comes right down to it, was in the top position, uh, which is gonna at least give him points for controlling the fight and uh, perhaps more active in the striking department as well. As, that's pretty much all that went down in round number two was Jorge Pavlov on top landing shots from the guard of Moroza. Moroza made a good submission attempt uh, for a triangle choke, but was that enough to win him the round? So now the all important third and final round coming up right now. Eagles, excuse me, FIA championship. Even I'm still adjusting to the new brand name here. FIA Championship MMA Rules Fight from Kishino, Moldova. Nice knee there. And perhaps a new game plan. Keep things standing up. Both guys, as we saw in round number one, are talented strikers. 
but you can see just how tired they are. That grappling for five minutes straight will do it. It'll zap the life right out of you. Sweeps the leg right out, and we go right back to where we were. This is a grinding kind of a fight, isn't it? This is where you just grind down your opponent, and it could be one of those cases where it all comes down to stamina. Who's gonna be exhausted first to the point where they can't just defend themselves properly, and they finally give that ever important opening to the opponent. So it could seem that maybe Gergay Pavlov's game plan is just to simply sit there in, in guard and just throw punches and elbows just like that and just wear this guy down and rack up the points with the punches. He's in a dominant position. And unless Morozan is a little bit more active here or could reverse the position like he did in round one, uh, or, or can land more strikes somehow off of his back, then it would seem like Pavlov is in a position to win this thing. Ooh, hard shots going in there. And again, more of this grinding kind of a strategy here by Gheorghe Pavlov. It still may pay off, though. There's still two minutes left in round number three. And he may find an opening here. crowd getting a little rambunctious here. They thought maybe he was going to have another opportunity. Oh, oh, oh my, and now he does. Oh, now he's got that sucker locked on. But can he finish it? Oh, and he slipped right out of it. And he gets right back to where he's comfortable. Now he creates a little bit of space, and look at that, just pounces right back on top of him here. That's exactly where Gheorghe Pavlov wants to be, and he's not going to have it any other way. Whoa! May have spoken too soon as Moroza nearly was able to reverse the position again. Oh, a solid right hand, two of them in a row. Landing upstairs, boy, he is all over him with right hands now. Left hand goes in as well. He can sense that the round is coming to a conclusion, is trying to get in as many strikes as possible, and that'll do it. Three rounds in the books here at FIA Championship, and we will go to the judges. Good sportsmanship here between these two fighters, and the judges will sort it out one way or another.
Well, let's take a look at some highlights here. Th there's only uh, about a 30 second period where they were actually striking in a vertical position. The rest of the time they were down there on the canvas and it was just Georgi Pavlov wailing away with right hands for about 90% of the round. And that happened in all of rounds two and three. So I don't see under any other way except for to score it in favor of Pavlov. But we shall see. Let's get the official word. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready to find out the judge's decision. And this one is unanimous. Red corner, Gorge Pavlov. Well, man, there's got to be an easier way to win a fight, right? I can't, <laughs> can't you just knock the guy out in the first couple seconds?